Hello, this is Kitch. Welcome back to the Forgotten Coast. And here we are in episode two. This episode is called Storm Shelter Steakhouse. Um, this is going to be a jam-packed episode. I'm really excited to share the final product with everyone. Um, it's a bit of a longer episode, uh, but there is a lot of content in this one, and it's going to be really, really detailed and I'm really excited to share it. Here we are back working on Storm Rock, and if you recall from episode one, Storm Rock is sort of, the idea here is this is a kind of barren, jagged rock out in the, the sea, and it's been beaten down by storms and hurricanes, waves, typhoons, whatever, whatever weather storm you could think of. And um, you know, the remainings of this rock, or you know, perched on this rock, are these speed slides in our. This is kind of the high thrill section of our water park. So we built the slides in the last episode, and now we are working on something else that's going to be beneath the slides and you could probably figure it out from the name of the episode itself but this is going to be a restaurant um, and the idea here is I kind of wanted to make a restaurant that was sort of this shelter from the storm so to speak underneath the rock so you could think of maybe story could be at some point there was some people living on the island and they built this shelter to get away from the storm so it's it's sort of supposed to be not quite like a cave I don't want it to look too much like a cave so we're not gonna have too many stalactites stalagmites that kind of stuff um, but I do want it to look very natural and rough uh, like it was carved directly out of the rock so sort of this cozy but also kind of damp vibe is kind of what we're going for. Um, and what are we building here? This, this, I guess I'll let you guys figure this one out for yourself. Um, going with these temple pieces here uh, that, like I said in the last episode, that black texture is, or that, I guess I have it painted black here, but that texture is really good for um, this really dark color that I want to go for. Um, of all the pieces in the game, I think these temple pieces can give you the the truest, darkest black of any type of of other piece in the game. Here we are finishing this. This is actually, if you haven't figured it out yet, it's going to be sort of a chandelier of sorts. Um, I tried to add a variety of pieces here. I wanted to use that that net light on the bottom to give it sort of this kind of ghostly tealish glow. We're moving on here to some rock work, we're starting kind of the exterior of the mountain or the rock, so to speak. Um, we're going to get to more of this later. Now, the interesting thing about this build is because the pieces I'm using being these kind of awkward triangular temple pieces, I can't just build the entire exterior of the rock first so I kind of have to build everything from the ground up so you're gonna see me working a lot on the interior of the restaurant before any of the exterior really gets built with the exception being these what I'm doing right now um, and the reason that kind of works and an advantage of doing it this way is you don't have all those pieces you know in your way as you're trying to work on the interior of your building. I highly recommend this tactic for anyone who's doing an interior. If it's possible, you should always try to build the interior before you build the exterior, which a lot of people, I mean, most people don't do it that way because it's kind of counterintuitive. Wouldn't really make sense, you'd think, to build the inside of a building before you know what the outside even looks like. But if you can kind of think ahead in your mind of what you want that exterior shape to look like, and you can kind of box it in and build the walls but before you build the roof building the interior will save you a huge hassle uh, because you don't have to be you know tinkering with the camera a whole lot as you're trying to you know build inside and underneath the walls and roofs etc so see you can see this uh, kind of triangular 
rocky, barren outskirt uh, border of sorts that I'm working on um, is kind of the idea that I'm going for here with that jagged, that jagged rock look. Um, I want it to really feel like it's been weathered by the storms, even though we don't we don't have a storm in this game. So it looks, you know, like a bunch of sunshine and and, and peacefulness in Planet Coaster, but we can imagine that the theme here in real life would be, you know, this would have been I like to think of somewhere maybe in the Pacific Northwest of the of the United States, like a where there's a lot of lighthouses, there's coastline, jagged, rocky, uh, a lot of waves. Um, a lot of like Coast Guard movies are set in that in that kind of scene. So that's the idea. That's the theme we're going for here. So this is the floor of the restaurant that you're seeing here. Using these, I think they're the I think they're from the Ghostbusters pack. I'm I'm not entirely sure, but these are great great pieces for floors, roofs. I mean, it's such a cool kind of blocky stone texture. I use it all the time. Um, one of my one of my favorite flat roof pieces. And what, what a lot of people don't realize is anything that's called a roof is really kind of doubles as a floor because any flat roof can be used for a floor or a roof. Um, I kind of use them interchangeably depending on the on the build style. So hope everyone's been doing well. This is I'm recording this quite a bit in advance from when you all will be seeing it. I'm trying to record about, I don't know, maybe a handful, maybe 10 episodes ahead of time, just so I can get these guys, these scheduled to release on a weekly basis for everyone. So, so you as the viewers are not waiting for extended periods of time for, for me to get another episode out. Um, so I'm hoping that if all goes well, I can get a large enough buffer in place, maybe 10 episodes worth, 10 weeks or so, uh, where I won't need to, you won't need to worry about anything being delayed and I can finish the whole project on a weekly, weekly episode release. Uh, but so far, with the exception of Thanksgiving weekend that I was at home with family, uh, I can pretty much get one episode done a week. So I think a weekly schedule should work and I don't think, I don't even know if I'll necessarily need 10 weeks of buffer. That's that might be excessive, but so any any comments you guys leave, I, I promise I'm reading all of them. I'm considering all your feedback. Uh, just know that if this if you're watching this and you leave a comment and you and it doesn't seem like I pick it up for for the next episode, it's probably because these episodes have been recorded far in advance before I had the chance to read those comments. But don't worry, in due time I will incorporate all feedback if if it's good and I feel like it's necessary so kind of continuing on the restaurant here um, these black temple pieces are I really started using these because they're so much larger and they take up they kind of fill the space a lot quicker than those jagged triangular pieces go so they look a little boxy but they'll all get sorted out here in the end um, don't worry we won't have a plain boxy restaurant at the end of the episode. Looking at the deck itself here, extending that further down, I'm really uh, really excited to, to work on the next. The next episode is actually going to be, I think, one of my favorites. Um, I'm not going to spoil it for you guys, but um, that's it's going to be it's gonna really, really set the the theme here for this uh, island. I, I think I think the next episode is gonna be one of one of the, my favorites, and I hope you guys enjoy it as well. So, like I've always said, we're going for a lot of realism on this build. So that's why you're seeing some of this plain concrete uh, ceiling work that I'm going with here. And I did add all those benches on the outskirts. Um, off off camera. There's going to be a lot of different aspects of this build that I do off camera just because there's a lot of content I want to get out in this episode. Um, this restaurant is actually quite the complex build. It, it took 
It took quite a bit of footage and a lot of time to make this, but I didn't want to split it up into multiple episodes because I my goal here is I want to have a complete finished product to show everyone for each episode. I don't want to, if, if possible, I don't want to leave things half done for an episode. There's going to be some exceptions if we get to some of the more complex rides. I just won't be able to do all that in one one episode, but in this case I didn't think it was necessary to have two episodes just for the restaurant itself, so we have spliced it all together into one episode, and to save on some of that time, uh, you'll see that I'll start working on an individual section just to kind of show the pieces I'm using, how I'm building it, but then as I continue to build and rotate and copy every piece around the entire build, a lot of that will be cut out. Um, and I think this will be an example here. I don't think I have every single bit of this wall shown. I believe at some point here it's going to cut to a new section of the restaurant that I'm working on. And that way I'm hoping that I can, you can see everything I'm building and how I built it, but then you don't have to see the repetition, so to speak. So here, yeah, so we're working on a bit of a border here on the outside. Again, these temple pieces are really nice. I, I assume I'm going to be working with these a lot in this in this build style. So the challenge will be keeping it unique, keeping it fresh, not not trying not being too repetitive. Yeah, the classic Z what do they call it? Z Z finding, I think, where you have two pieces that are overlapping and they start flickering. So you have to slightly adjust it in the vertical and the horizontal direction. You'll, you'll see me doing that a lot in throughout the build. So here I'm working on the window borders and this this piece right here is absolutely one of my favorites in the whole game. It's the one meter, I believe it's one meter, pillar piece, wooden pillar, and it has such a nice texture it just feels like it could fit in to almost any single theme there's a lot of wooden pieces in the game that don't i can't say the same thing about some of them just kind of look and feel very like western um, and like they would really only make a whole lot of sense in a western build whereas this piece is so generic it can be used in almost anything uh, that plank piece that i'm rotating and duplicating around right now is another great one it's super small super skinny um, as as many players know, small pieces in Planet Coaster are a rarity. It's very easy to find a massive piece. Just type in the word sci-fi in the scenery dialogue, and you'll find pieces that take up almost this entire this entire restaurant. Uh, but small pieces not so easy to find. So you have to be a little bit creative in, in how you use them. This wooden beam here is another piece that I use extensively um, pretty much in almost every build I do this this piece is kind of my my go-to I try to I'm, I'm gonna going to try to get out of my comfort zone a little bit and, and use some pieces that are not the same types of pieces that I've used in the past just to give myself give a little bit of variety keep it keep it new and exciting for me and of course for the viewers as well. So using the pirate ship wheel here for the table of the, of the restaurant, we're gonna have a lot of these scattered around. I, I figured it would, it made sense to have this sort of pirate wheel nautical presence in the restaurant. I, I don't want this to be a pirate themed area. Um, in fact, there isn't really going to be true pirate themed anything in this park. We're, we're not going to see much of like a shanty town anywhere or a, um, you know pirates fighting or none of the stereotypical classic pirate themes that you you have seen in past Planet Coaster builds. We're, we're trying to keep this a unique theme um, but taking elements from the pirate theme pack, pack as well as other other themes so we'll be same with same goes with adventure it's gonna seem very I would say this build overall will probably feel the most 
like an adventure style. Uh, but but it's gonna try. We're gonna try to be unique in our own way and uh, try to stay clear of the stereotypical tropes that you'd see in an adventure style build. Now these little chairs <laughs> kind of threw me off for a while. Actually, this took a lot longer than I thought just to make a simple seat. I was tinkering around with the different pieces. Finally, I decided to go for the backing here with just this slightly bluish gray backing with the uh, plank piece. The reason I did that is just I wanted a little bit of color. I think color is a very underrated uh, tool in Planet Coaster. It is one of the, uh, I believe it's six visual elements. That's some, I'm getting into some art terms here, I hope. I hope any artists out there can, can clarify anything I'm getting wrong here, but um, it's one of the basic visual elements. It's, it's super important for anything that any, um, how to describe anything that looks good to the eye. Uh, color is, a, is one of those elements, so it's important to have splashes of color. Here and there, you don't want all your builds to look very monotone. Um, and with some themes, that can be really difficult. So this is, you know, weather, stormy, rock. You know, you're going to see a lot of blacks, browns, grays, some blues in there. But by using the blues and giving them a lighter shade and kind of against that dark brown background, they, it kind of helps them pop. And that's a technique I'll be using throughout the entire build. I'm um, trying to get little bits of color here and there, just such as the window borders, the temple pieces, the benches themselves, just those little light blues here and there to add that color. Now one thing, if I did a little bit of research on just restaurants, well I wouldn't call it research. I, if, Unless you consider research these days, it's just googling images. I don't, I don't think anyone considers proper research. But I did, I did some, some Googling and looked up some images of restaurants. And one thing that is very common, and I think we all can relate to this, especially in chain restaurants, um, such as your classic, I'm going to list off some American restaurants here, but uh, Olive Garden, Red Lobster, Outback Steakhouse, kind of classic like steakhouse style restaurants. You see this compartmentalization. And the reason they do that is just to really just to save on space. They're trying to jam as much people as possible in that restaurant without sacrificing, you know, without making it feel too crowded. So they're trying to keep it kind of homey and cozy, but also pack as many people in there as they can, because of course more people means more business. So we're doing that same tactic here. We're gonna add some walls, compartmentalize the restaurant a little bit. And I think it helps, it helps make the it feel a lot more like a restaurant. When you have these just large open spaces with tables everywhere, it starts to feel more like a cafeteria and less like an actual restaurant. I mean, this being a steakhouse, this is going to be sort of a nicer restaurant we're going for. I wouldn't go as far as calling it fine dining, but you know, this is an amusement park after all, so no one's coming here to have a, have a $50, $50 steak. Uh, but it is going to be on the nicer end. We're trying to, you know, we want it to look like a steakhouse. We want it to look like a nicer restaurant. And we'll be doing a lot of restaurants throughout this build. So I'm excited to experiment with different ways to, to give them that, that different atmosphere um, and how, how I can keep them unique, but also each feel, look and feel like a real life restaurant. So stairs here, these are important just to get to that elevated section where all the, the booths are going to be that look out over the water view. And then one more section of stairs here on the side. I believe there's actually, yeah, there's going to be one more on the far side. And this would just be for the waiters and waitresses to be able to access those tables easily. I mean, you wouldn't want, you know, every every restaurant's actually thought out very meticulously in real life. They they plan out where the waiters and waitresses are 
what tables they have assigned to them and the, the most efficient pathway for them to get to the tables. Um, and that's why you would have these stairways in multiple areas just for, for more access to the, the booths. Also, there would be some safety regulations such as emergency exit and, and exit and stuff like that. So here we're compartmentalizing again with these wooden beams. And I didn't want to make a true wall that separated the entire restaurant because then it becomes a little too, cr feels crowded, a little more cramped. So instead I kind of went with these, they're, they're still walls, but they're almost, they're not completely connected to the ceiling. They're sort of fake walls, so to speak, I suppose. Um, we'll have, you know, we'll have a doorway and then we'll have like a wall itself, but it's only going to be like a half wall. So you can still see over the top. So it still gives you that open feeling that you would see in a restaurant. Um, you'd be able to see across the restaurant to the windows overlooking the water, but at the same time, it'll feel a little more cozy. So this stone texture here, this is a great, great texture to use for any style similar to this where you want a lot of rock presence. Um, I mean, the main building materials in this island are really going to be concrete, rock, stone, you know, things that are, that are able to withstand the weather. So you're not going to see a lot of like flimsy buildings or it's not going to be a modern, anything fancy because that would just get ripped apart in the storm. So we're trying to go with more basic building materials. Um, and stone is a stone would be a staple here. Um, and there's a couple different ways to get stone textures in the game. Stone is not a very easy texture to work with in the game just because there's not a whole lot of pieces. You have to get a little creative with it. Um, those pieces I placed under the columns there as sort of footings. That's one of the best. I think it's, co I don't remember if it's cobblestone is the name. I don't, you'd have to look. Um, but it's, you can take the, the end piece there and rotate it about itself to make sort of like a perfect sized footing there for each column. And it really adds a nice, just extra layer to the build. Building in layers is really important. Um, in Planet Coaster, if you want more detail in your builds, you know, instead of anything you build, so consider a column, a wall, a window, you always have to think, how can I add a little more detail on this to make it unique, add another layer of theming on top of it. So another piece that's great for stonework, and I discovered this recently, is you can see it on the bottom of sort of the trim of the, of the wall there, and that is the planter piece. It's a vanilla piece to Planet Coaster. Um, you don't, you don't need any DLC to, to have it. And you can recolor it any color you want. So I chose this gray. And it's it's a large piece, so it's not gonna be used really that versatile for a lot of uh, different use, uses. But in this case, for that trim work, I just sunk it into the wall, only showing like a little bit of the stone. And it works great for just uh, trim, trim work. So, of course these benches are not going to cut it for the tables, we have to make our own custom ones, as that's how this build's going to be, everything custom. And so we're doing that with just the simple plank piece here. We're not going to go overboard on, on these tables, um, just something a little, a little different, you know, a little backing, a little backrest there, um, a, little, a little light at the table, and... I suppose that could be whatever you think it is. I, I think of that as a sort of a, maybe a condiment, condiment like um, holder there at the end of the table that could be used for any number of things. So this is another piece that kind of gives that illusion of stone. I suppose it's more of a brick, but if you recolor it to be more of a grayish color, I think it, it, it works as, as like a concrete stone block texture um, and this one comes from I think the, the Ghostbusters pack I believe there's a lot of really good I think they call them Gozer temple pieces 
not I'm not super familiar with the Ghostbusters series, so I'm sure that's referencing a a legitimate thing in that series. But um, they're really great pieces because they they give you a whole range of of new textures and colors and they work with almost any theme in the game too which is which is i think what makes them so great is you can use them in adventure builds you can use them in a realism build a pirate build uh, they're very they're very versatile in that regard this area here is going to be sort of the entrance waiting room check-in area for the hostess hostesses to is that the plural hostesses that's interesting it's kind of a jumble of s's hostesses well anyway now these these pieces that i'm looking at here these actually are pre-built they came from um a frozen coasters which is the park i worked on before and all they really are is just basic utensils and that's a little soda machine that i made just made out of some of the smaller pieces in the game and i'm, I'm going to be using these throughout the entire build i think it doesn't make sense to remake a soda machine four different times for a build. I mean, a soda machine is a soda machine, right? Plates are plates, utensils are utensils. So I'm probably going to be using these throughout. Um, here's some, you know, cups or mugs or, or whatever they they would be in, in this instance. Those kind of, I think they look like little coffee makers. Uh, they're made actually with the the lamp, the spooky lamp tipped upside down. And it gives that little kind of coffee maker look, I suppose. Here's the waiting room, just taking these benches and duplicating them here and creating a little area for people to wait as wait for their seat to be called. And of course, we need a kitchen. This restaurant would not be complete without a kitchen. Uh, I'm not going to make a detailed interior of the kitchen, so. If you're, if you're waiting for that, you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer. We are instead gonna place a door down. Actually, it's gonna be a couple of doors uh, by the end of the episode. And we're going to just pretend that that's where the, the waiters and waitresses would go to get their food. They'd come out, they'd have all their, their uh, utensils and uh, drink making area right there behind the, the um, hostess, hostesses area. Um, for them to, you know, prepare drinks and, and all that. And then they would go distribute the food out to the tables. This stone texture here again, uh, using that for the waiting room area. Now this, this is an interesting part of the build here. This is actually, the piece I'm using here is a upside down uh, car cargo vehicle I'm trying to think what the word would be to describe that it's it's like a semi basically tipped over on its side and it just kind of it it looks it looks like four different pieces put together to make one little table I think it works really well it's I could have made that out of art shapes maybe some pillars and then some planks colored white but instead that piece just kind of kills all those birds with one stone so that's what we went with, and this, if you haven't figured it out yet, is going to be a salad bar. And I tried using that glass awning. It was just too big. It wasn't going to work. So we went with more of our basic glass here for the kind of overhang. I had to I had to do some more googling of uh, salad bars and try to figure out what exactly they look like. It, it's always interesting in this game when you when you try to build something. You know, you think, you think you understand what something looks like until you sit down and actually try to make it out of Planet Coaster pieces. And the second you do that, you realize, oh, I don't actually know what a salad bar looks like. You know in general what it looks like, but you don't know exactly what the details look like. Do the plates come before? Do they come after? What different types of food are in the salad bar, etc. So it's interesting how much you learn about just little pieces in the game or pieces in real life that you're trying to build um, now the funny thing about this I just went on about how great this uh, truck piece that I'm using for the table is and how oh it saves and all these pieces the piece count uh, but the funny thing is <laughs> I ended up switching it tonight about I don't know an hour after I built this 
and realized that there was a light on the like front of the truck, like the like the tail lights that are just this bright, ugly red, and they're just shining through the whole restaurant. And I'm like, oh crap! And I tried to turn them off, and you, I guess you can't on that piece. So I had to actually take all that out and make it out of basic shapes, and do exactly what I said I was trying to avoid by increasing the piece count there. But I don't have that recorded, so that will happen off camera. So the wooden plank here again, you can see me using it all over the place just to add a little bit of a divider in between the, the food items here. And I, so I guess that would be maybe some sort of lettuce or spinach there. And I started experimenting with all the different uh, candy pieces in the game and in the, the festive pack or the festive theme category. And I ended up, some of them I kept, some of them I got rid of. Um, I just kind of played around with them, recolored them until until it looked believable enough to me. Now, one thing as you're building, it's important to be smart in how you're grouping things. So the way I did this is I grouped each little piece of food together, and then I created an extra one kind of off there on the path like I'm doing right now with those carrots. And then at the end, when I had all these pieces, all I had to do was grab the one outside the salad bar on the path there and I could easily drag them. If I didn't do that, I would have had to have grabbed each one which are underneath all those other pieces. It becomes difficult to select them. It's just kind of a pain. So just trying to think through that and you know, think about how you can easily move them around and be smart in the way you're grouping and building things it will save you a lot of time down the road. So I'm rearranging the foods here, trying to color them, make them look a little more realistic. Some of these I do end up deleting. I think this one I, yeah, I color white to make to make it look like some sort of whipped cream or maybe a, some sort of like ice cream or, or something that would have that whip, whippy texture. Is whippy, whippy, is that a word? I, I don't know, I used it. Here's this event just for a little more realism. Maybe this is sort of a heating system to keep the, the food fresh. And then of course we have to add our little scoopers to get the food out from the, from the thing onto your plate. What, I don't know what that would be called, a, a container I suppose. So for whatever reason I had some issue with the recording at this point. I had all the footage recorded and I went into editing it and it just was like super choppy and it wasn't it wasn't working. It was like freezing up and I don't know what was going on. I think something got messed up with when I re re remixed the recording in, in OBS. But um, so some of the footage is lost here. I put in a little bit here and there of the any part that wasn't messed up by the recording so this is kind of me working on actually this is a waterfall that I'm putting into the center of the restaurant these are some just the pipes kind of trying to make it look a little more realistic uh, but some sections of this I did I did lose so the waterfall build itself is in the splash pool below I lost some of that footage but that's all right you'll see it all in the cinematics at the end and here we are another piece I lost a lot of footage for but this is the me working on some of the duct work uh, on the exterior so this is why I built that concrete uh, ceiling on the outside was I wanted to have a space to have some realism uh, duct and HVAC equipment now I did I also did some googling on what this looks like and I am NOT a mechanical engineer I am NOT an electrical engineer so this is very much just my interpretation of what it might look like in the top of a building and of course I mean I don't know what the exact function of this pipe here I'm making is it looks like it could be some sort of conduit run or piping it, and the idea is just trying to make it look like it could make sense right so you're trying to maintain that suspense of disbelief to make it appear that oh okay that is clearly duct work but I don't think anyone's expecting to look at that and be like, oh, you know, you're, you didn't have the right pieces of, of equipment in the right order, blah, 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 blah. So I think it works. 
here is a kind of back at the waiting area at the uh, hostesses kiosk. Uh, we've got some menus there just made out of the newspaper and the table seating chart just taking a simple image online of a restaurant seating chart putting it on a TV screen and that I think it works and then just adding the hostess workers themselves just to make it a little more feel a little more alive I added some people sitting here in the waiting room area just to try to kind of make it again feel a little more usable and because the guests aren't really going to be actually walking into this restaurant and using it I, I didn't include a, a shop or anything so I might throw in a vista point here and there just to try to get a little bit of guest traffic in and out but we'll see here is sort of a couple of these a lot of this footage got kind of cut out but um, this is just a pay kiosk where the waiters and waitresses would go to to ring up the order and bring the check to you just to save them walking time and then we've got a couple fountains that I'm putting in the middle of the restaurant I think water is a really great way to add some dynamic motion to your build and just add that that just that pop of you know realism and ambiance uh, I think the splashing water is just such a, a neat sound now that the interior is essentially done um, we are on to the exterior finally so starting off with just s sort of a trim here just to make that cut between the exterior ceiling and the start of the jagged rocks a little more clean so we have like a clean seal between the roof um, and then we'll, from there we'll move on to the actual finicky process of rotating and twisting these every possible way you can imagine to try to get this this look that I'm going for of this kind of jagged exterior uh, rocky um, I suppose ceiling so a lot of this I'm cutting out uh, you'll see the end product here but this is the general idea it's very painstaking it's just take a piece rotate it and try to cover up all gaps so you're not having water leaking through your ceiling every direction um, and then of course watch out for all those slides that are going all over through the roof trying to get the pieces to wrap and hug around those without clashing with them final product and you're gonna see this is kind of this the interior roof looks like a jagged interior of the rock almost as if someone threw a stick of dynamite in the rock and just blew up the whole interior and that's exactly what I'm trying to go for here is this natural rock look um, with some realistic man-made structure built inside of it now some sections of the restaurant I did want to have more of a flat roof it just made sense it's when you do these custom weird roofs and with this weird awkward floor plan that's not a perfect square you get into a lot of issues with trying to cover up all the little gaps and you know the little awkward angles and stuff and, and kind of the, my cop out on this build is that with the jagged temple pieces when you're going with this natural rock look there's really no wrong way to do it you just kind of randomly cover everything up uh, but there is a couple spots where you have a flat roof and a, you know a corner piece kind of poking through and I, I had to go back and clean a lot of that up on the interior which I did off camera but and just finishing it up now and this is actually bringing us pretty close to the end of the stream here end of the recording um, just a couple last details before we'll be cutting to the cinematics some of this interior um, I just I wanted to make I wanted to bring a little bit more of that rocky texture natural look to the interior so I added a few of these kind of pointy rocks poking up in some of the corners tried not to block the egress too much um, oh and of course one big portion that we have to cover still is the lighting on the interior here so starting with the salad bar just using this floodlight I think it works great uh, you kind of color it a orangish 
Uh, it starts off as a yellow here, but I promise it doesn't stay like that for long. That looks pretty terrible. But just to get the... I started with that just to lay them out and get the color, get the um, amount of spread of the light that I needed. And then I end up going with more of an orangish, and I think I end up modifying that to more of a white um, off camera. But And then I went with these, I think they're called the Moorish Temple Lamps. These are one of my favorite lamps in the whole game. They're, they're very themed, so you have to be careful in how you use them, but they just pop so much. The color on them is just amazing. You can color that. There's like four different colors you, of the lamp itself, and then so in day and in night, they can add so much color to your build. Um, in this case, I went with just kind of like a whitish light, and then because the lamp itself wasn't providing enough light, I added a few uh, area lights with a very, very, very dull kind of almost black color you got to be very careful you don't want to make it too strong but just sinking them into the ground uh, to give just a little more overall light to the area but you have to make it super dull so it doesn't stand out you want it to look like it's not even there you don't want people to notice that extra light trying to create the illusion that it's coming from the lantern itself even though it's not so it's kind of that artificial light so the, one of the last things here is some of the re supports on the slides. There's a few sections where a couple of the slides sort of come through the roof. And I wanted to make, make sure they were realistically supported to the wall. Uh, just using the coaster supports, I think it, I think it works. I think it's believable. Um, I'm not a structural engineer, so I can't tell you that it's e the exact way that an engineer would port the slide. But I think it's believable and it works for for this build. So that's sort of getting us to the end of the recording. If you liked the episode, please give it a like. Subscribe for more. These should be on a weekly basis um, as we continue through the rest of the park. And um, I'm really looking forward to future episodes. So thanks for watching, everyone. I'm going to leave you with the rest of the recording, finish out, and then we'll fade into some cinematics. See you in the next one.